Right. Next one. Board two. That's what you get in the minute. This is the one with a strange fault. Watchdog runs. See, it's gone out. No activity on anything. Now, from experience, the very first thing these boards do when they start up is a RAM test. So, we'll go straight to RAM. Yeah, I tried to start there. Okay. So, RAM select on these is pin 20. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Dead. But, dimly dead. So I know following back on the schematic that the RAM selector is driven from here. And I've already found something that's wrong. This is a NAND gate, which means two, a high on both its inputs should make a low on the output. So we've got a high here, pin 1. We've got a high here, pin 2, we go here, we've got a high, pin 3. That's not possible. You cannot have a high output for two high inputs, it's an AND gate, not AND, which means if pins 1 and 2 are high, this should be a low. So this is actually trying to select RAM at the minute, but can't. So I think what's happening now is it's just looping round and round and round and round the RAM test. While it's doing that, so it can test the RAM. It's keeping the watchdog running, which comes from here. So I don't know if it'll get an error eventually, or if it's trying to show RAM error on the display at the minute. It can't show anything. I know the di display is getting powered because when you power down, sometimes you get a flick on the display, sometimes not. You're not getting it there. But yeah, so right away I know there's a fault with this. So. I got a spare one there, they cost pennies, so I'm just going to bung this one in. Alright, let's get a socket and I'll bung it straight in there. Alright, bye for now. Right, so, change that part out there. And let's see what happens. Nothing at the minute. Now! You'll notice I've got this. You'll notice I've got this tile lead here. Also, notice the focus has gone a bit wrong here. Right. right. That's what you want to see. And we've got RAM access now, but we're not running yet because we're not. We're still not accessing the RAM proper. I don't think so. I put my logic probe across all the pins and I came to one that's a bit suspicious. So if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Tie tie all the time. Now it's not a short. It's just tie tie all the time. And it's the same up in the ROMs. Now, it's pin 6 in the ROMs. BFM do this weird sort of primitive security thing where they scramble some of the ROM, the ROM lines. They do it quite pro prolifically in Scorpion 2 and 4. With this one, it's just like one ahead. Now watch this. I thought I'd try an experiment because that one that one line seems to be tied all the time. So I measured the resistance and I wasn't getting in. Measured the resistance between pin 7 on my RAM and the CPU and I've got a complete open circuit. So hold on, see if I can do this on camera. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nearly. It's hard to do on camera. May have to pause this one. Grab it. The grabbers are shit. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, hold on. 
Ooh. It's a bit more like it. There we go. And this board doesn't as much of an aerial. So, uh, yeah, I've got nothing to play it with. It. I've got so little to play it with at the minute. <laughs> but what I'll do is I'll go off and I'm going to tie these two traces together and we'll see how we get on. Okay. I bridged that trace. Quieter, but it's because it's much better. Con it's probably in better condition. I tell you about what I said about the aerial effect with the other board. It could well be just once you clean the battery damage up on your original board that it will settle down. It could also be that the potential that I've got on is too low a value. Right. Oh, I bumped my reset line there. And again. I'm trying to get a hold of my two wires to play the game. Right. Let's see. Oh, I much better sound than this one. There's still maybe another fault in the other one. This board's probably the one you'd be best using the machine that it's fixed. Oh yes. <laughs> I just blew up the speaker. <laughs> ah, hold on, let's sort these wires out. Keep moving. Reset line out of the way. Yeah, so nothing wrong with sound on this one. I've just blew up my test speaker. Not to worry. Sorry about the phone shaking. Just a nice beat to that tune. Just having a little dance. I keep bumping that lead. Uh. It's not the board resetting over and over, it's just me bumping the lead.
This one's glitchy, actually. Oh, wait a minute. I'm using the wrong lead for this, I think. This one's a little bit glitchy, this one's adding credits at the same time. <sighs> Which is odd. Hmm. Maybe more to look at in this one. So I'm going to get back to this. We're adding credits. On the wrong line. I think the enables are stuck. One of the enables is stuck to the switches, I think. You can see it's mostly running. Just go and investigate the switches now. found a transistor on switch matrix that is shorted that's TR43 that's one of the ones on the switch strobes the effect that will have is when you're pressing a switch on the game you'll also be pressing another switch in this case it looks like when you press start, you're also pressing the 20 pence input. And when you press feature stop or whatever it is over here somewhere, it's on this second line here, you're pressing one of the door switches. Because I was wondering why that was initializing all the time. So, we will hopefully there it is there. We'll put a new one in and see how we get on. Alright, so I think we're sorted. I think we're okay. Not crediting up anymore. When we hit start. Sound is spot on in this one. I 
another scratchy pop, but it sounds much better than this one. Let's see. Hmm. Don't think I'm going to win anything, to be honest. Never know. It's hard to see what you're doing when you've got no reels, you've got no lamps, all sorts. So all I'm doing there is I'm blipping the coin in with two wires. That beeps to start the holes. So I'll leave it at that. I would say this is the board you want to use in your machine. Because it's got absolute minimal battery damage and the volume works beautifully. I might go back to the other board, do a bit more work in the volume. I might, I might not. Um, depends where I've got the parts or not. But this one is nice. Very little interference coming off it. Boots up beautifully now. All the buttons seem to be working. Yep. I think this one is the one you use. It's the one without the Global Games sticker on it. The third board you'll recognise it straight away. It's got parts missing. And the first board that was working on is the one that's got the interference and the sound. Say that I've got a new pot in order for that, I might revisit that, but basically all I've got left to do is to burn you the other version of the ROMs. This is version 2.5, there's also version 1.6 available, and well, that's all she wrote basically. Let's say this one's in beautiful condition, so this is def this, you use this one. So, so faults with it were broken trace to the ram, no ram enabled because that chip there was blown and that transistor there was out. Okay, so that's that. Bye bye for now.